Well, it's time for your weekly UAS news update. And this week, I've got four things for you. The first one is the AMA that's asking the FAA to reconsider some of the altitude limitations that they're trying to put in place. The next thing is a drone company that's making a drone interceptor that's gonna be uh, crashing into rogue drones. So we'll talk about that. Um, another thing that came out this week that was, that was pretty cool, pretty cool video was um, an AI drone that's gonna try to uh, compete against piloted human pilot drones uh, and see who's gonna be faster. And then the last thing is gonna be um, a, a note from the FAA to stay away from a balloon show that's going on in New Mexico. So let's go ahead and get started. So this week, the AMA that represents the model aircraft is reaching out to the community for some support. And what's happened is that over the years, the, uh, the, the members of the AMA have been able to fly at AMA sites across the country, and there's hundreds of them. And they've been able to fly on the basis of a letter of authorization. And that letter of authorization was something that each of the groups have been uh, working to get approved for. And, uh, and it's specific to that site. And then the FAA recently came up with new guidance that basically says that if the site is in controlled airspace, they won't be able to fly over 400 feet. And if it's outside of controlled airspace in class golf airspace, they're gonna be allowed to fly either at 700 or at 1200 feet. Up to, I should say, uh, 700 feet AGL and 1200 feet AGL. Now, um, this might actually come to a surprise to you that this was going on in the first place. But what the FAA has done for years is that they've allowed these sites that have been accident free for many, many years to actually operate at higher altitude. And um, what the FAA has said also is that there is no possible way to get a waiver from these new rules. So the AMA is kind of uh, talking about this and, and trying to get the public's interest because what this is going to happen, what's going to happen with this is that a bunch of sites are likely going to have to close because a lot of the members won't be able to fly at higher altitude. Now you may say, why in the world would you want to fly higher than 400 feet? Well, that's a good question. If you come from the, the quadcopter world, then 400 feet is plenty enough. Now, if you come from uh, some of the model aircraft that fly at some of these sites, like for example, jet powered aircraft, or uh, soaring aircraft that use the, uh, the, the wind currents, then at that point you need to fly at much higher altitude. As a matter of fact, the AMA actually argues that flying at lower altitude with some of these aircraft is gonna be more dangerous than actually flying at a higher altitude like they have to. The other thing that the AMA has said is that in the last 30, 40 years, there has been no accident or very few accidents reported at these sites. And all of a sudden, they're the target of these changes in regulation, which really did not come from the AMA members, if you think about it. All this came from a new world, which is the, the quadcopter world. So, um, so the AMA is kind of uh, trying to get with the FAA to figure out a way so that their members can actually fly at higher altitude and fly safely. So what I wanna hear from you is what do you think? I know some of you fly uh, different types of aircraft, not necessarily quadcopters. I know I spend a lot of time talking about quadcopters, but I wanna hear how this has, uh, how this could possibly influence you and, uh, and what you plan on doing about it. And um, also, I want to hear from everybody else. Do you think that these uh, sites that have been flying for 30, 40 years with no problem should be allowed to keep flying under the same rules or should they be limited also to uh, what the FAA is saying, which is 400, 700, 1200 feet, depending on where they're located? Um, one of the things that also I'm wondering is if these sites are allowed to fly at higher altitude, which they have in the past, is this going to lead other people to say, well, you know, they're allowed to fly, so why can't I fly on my own in these areas? So uh, all these, I think, are great conversation topics. So uh, please leave your comment uh, down in the comment section and let me know what you think. The next thing that I read, read in the news this week is this company, it's called Endurol or Endurel. Uh, it's a Silicon Valley based uh, drone company that's building a, an interceptor drone. Now, you know the name of it, it's called the Interceptor. Very, very uh, unique name right here. Um, this drone is designed to slam into other drones in order to disable them, to actually break them apart and then make them fall. As you can see in the video right here, the, the footage is pretty dramatic. These, this drone is designed to fly at uh, speeds up to 100 miles an hour and just slam like a kamikaze into these drones in order to disable them. 
Uh, this is a completely different method than what we've seen in the past, where jamming, for example, was used as a method. So uh, I find this kind of an interesting approach. I'm not sure how I really feel about uh, drones being destroyed and then falling on the ground, which could potentially uh, lead to, uh, to, to injuries on the ground. So let me know what you think. What's the downside of having this kind of technology? Is this something that we need? Is a drone eventually going to be weaponized and used for something bad and we should have this kind of technology available? Is there any kind of other technology that you can get behind that, uh, that could be uh, taking down the bad drones? Uh, let me know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. The next thing that I saw is, uh, was a really cool video. Uh, actually, uh, right now you guys can't see, but there is a table right here. We've been working all day on recording a brand new course. Now, uh, I can't really show you what, uh, what we built. We actually built something within this course. Um, but uh, the, the person, there is a, there is a, 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 a co-instructor that's going to be teaching this course. And, um, and he's, uh, I showed him the video that, that you're going to see in, in, in this right here, and he was really excited about it. But uh, what's happened is that uh, this, uh, the, a, the, um, the DRL, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my words, I'm, I'm excited about the course. The, uh, the, the, the Drone Racing League has come up with a drone that's going to be AI uh, driven, uh, artificial intelligence driven, and uh, no pilots no data being sent and the drone is basically just going to be flying by itself and the idea is they're going to start a new race series and there's actually four races in that race series and, uh, and the, the drone is called the racer ai and uh, there's going to be nine identical ai drones all programmed differently by different teams no gps no data relay no human intervention and they're going to be competing against each other. Uh, the cool thing is this came out of uh, about 400 teams in 80 different countries that competed in order to get into those, those nine seats that are left. So you know that it's going to be a really good teams, uh, lots of really good brains behind all this data, uh, all these, these drones that are going to be flying around. And uh, the drone has four different cameras that are going to allow the AI to detect any objects. Uh, this is basically twice the amount of field of view that's available for human eye and uh, for human pilots. And that the end goal with this is that in a few years, they want to see these drones competing against a manned, un well, unmanned manned aircraft, if you want, uh, piloted uh, unmanned aircraft by human pilots, and they want to see those compete. So uh, you know, the, the video is playing right here in the background, and I think the video is, is kind of really cool. They made it really dramatic. Uh, but I'm, I'm interested from a technology standpoint to see what these drones are going to do. I'm also kind of interested to see how this technology is going to go into the mainstream. So uh, tell me what you think. What kind of technology out of this could go into the mainstream? How this can be adapted? What do you think is going to be the, uh, the influence from these drone racing things? If you think about about Formula One, for example, Formula One created a lot of technology that we find in cars today. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, engine uh, improvement and all these things that transfer into uh, real day uh, driving. So I, I can see that this will happen as well for the drone industry, and, and how this is going to change will be very interesting. So let me know what you think. The last thing I want to talk about today is something that the FAA has sent to a lot of pilots already, but stay away from the, the balloon festival that's going on in Albuquerque, New Mexico right now. Uh, the event ends this weekend on the 13th, and uh, basically there's a TFR in place. You can find more information about the TFR. It's FDC, uh, NOTAM FDC 9-8221, and I'm going to put a link in the description. If you live in this area, if you plan on flying, you have to stay at least four nautical miles away and uh, the, the TFR is up to 2,700 feet. So it goes pretty high up from 5.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. And uh, if you don't uh, follow the TFR, you can actually get a pretty hefty fine. $30,000 is what the FAA says, and some criminal pr prosecution. Uh, I think I read an art article. I couldn't find it for this video, but somebody actually did fly and did get in trouble for it. Please don't be that person. Uh, there's, a, there's a bazillion balloons out there. Go and watch it, but keep the drone at home. So uh, this is all I have this week. As always, please leave a comment, like the video if you liked it, and then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, more videos coming up. And like I said, a very exciting new course that's going to be built up uh, in the next couple of weeks that, uh, that's going to be released on pilotinstitute.com. So go check this out. As always, if you want to be a commercial remote pilot, uh, then uh, we have a course for this, 12 and a half hours long, 250 practice questions, as many practice tests as you want. Uh, we have a really cool app 
with, uh, with 110 uh, flashcards in it that you can use to study. We have cheat sheets, we have, you name it, everything is in this course. The most comprehensive course by far on the internet. And then you get a discount as well if you watch this channel. So uh, go with the YT News Update as a coupon and you'll get 25% off. Actually that coupon is valid for all the courses that we offer. So we have a lot of courses available on the platform, all taught by myself actually. And, um, and um, I hope to see you as a student. So this is all I have for this week. You guys have a great weekend. Actually tomorrow I'm gonna be flying a, a VTOL aircraft and a VTOL is a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. It's a drone and uh, the drone actually takes off vertically like this and then transition into a horizontal flight. I hope I can have some footage that I can use to show you guys. Uh, we're gonna be testing that out there and uh, it's gonna be pretty exciting. So with this, you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay away from balloons and I'll see you next week.